What is the most common type of pediatric brain tumor? And what location of the brain is it typically found in? May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month, so let's talk about it. A 10 year old boy was brought to his pediatrician by his parents for complaints of headaches and progressive trouble with his balance, as well as nausea. Given these findings, his pediatrician astutely ordered this MRI of the brain that showed this finding. This is a tumor in the patient's cerebellum. The cerebellum is located right here in the back part of our brain. It's also called the hind brain, and in Latin, it literally means the little brain. The cerebellum is the balance center of our brain, so any dysfunction or tumors within it can cause trouble with our balance and coordination. That's a generalized role of the cerebellum because there are also many other functions. In fact, did you know that the cerebellum contains over 50% of the neurons within our brain, but only occupies about 10% of the real estate? So it's tiny, but mighty. We could see on this patient's MRI that there was a mass lying within that back part of the brain called the cerebellum. And I asked the question, what symptoms would this patient likely present with? And the answer, which most of you guys got, was headaches and balance troubles. The two wrong answers that I gave was seizures and weakness. The cerebellum is not typically associated with an epileptic focus, so it doesn't typically cause seizures. Hemiplegia is also typically not associated with lesions within the cerebellum because the motor fibers are located in our cerebrum as well as the deeper structures of our brain and our brainstem. When we review this MRI of the brain, there is a focal area of enhancement with a cystic-like component. Here is a zoomed up image of this patient's lesion that shows a mural enhancing nodule and then an enhancing cystic wall. This is a very typical and common presentation and imaging appearance of what's called a pilocytic astrocytoma. They have also been labeled juvenile pilocytic astrocytomas because they are typically found in kids. In fact, over 75% of the cases are diagnosed in people under the age of 20. And 42 to 60% of these occur within the cerebellum. It can occur in other areas of the brain as well, but this is the most common presentation. There's a strong association of juvenile pilocytic astrocytomas with a disease called neurofibromatosis. Up to 20% of patients with neurofibromatosis type 1 will be diagnosed with a pilocytic astrocytoma, typically within the optic pathways. That's the nerves that control our vision. The best news about these types of tumors is that most of them are extremely slow growing and completely benign. They're usually the most treatable with a cure rate of over 90%. It's really important for clinicians to know that any lesion within the cerebellum, including tumors, strokes, or bleeds, can obstruct the flow of cerebrospinal fluid within the brain. This is a picture of how CSF flows within the brain, and you can see that it flows through an area right here called the fourth ventricle that lies between the cerebellum and the brainstem. So any masses within the cerebellum can potentially obstruct the fourth ventricle and cause backup of fluid on the brain called hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is an important thing to recognize because it could potentially be life-threatening. Obstruction of the cerebrospinal fluid will lead to increased intracranial pressure, which can cause headaches. And if it progresses, it can lead to nausea, vomiting, obtundation, coma, and even death. A few days ago in another video, I demonstrated how a neurosurgeon could perform a procedure called an external ventricular drain. That's a procedure where a neurosurgeon can place a catheter within the brain to alleviate intracranial hypertension or hydrocephalus. It's not always needed in cases like this, but may be utilized to treat hydrocephalus temporarily until the patient can get to surgery. If the neurosurgeon can successfully remove the entire tumor, this is over a 90% cure rate. In some tumors or in advanced cases, the mass may infiltrate areas of the brain where it may not be safe to totally resect, and some parts of the tumor may have to be left behind. In those cases, the oncological team will decide if it's safest to observe the tumor and watch for signs of growth or treat with radiation and or chemotherapy. Here's a very simplified video of what we do when we do a cerebellar tumor resection. We first make an incision on the back part of the head and then separate the muscles that attach to the base of our skull. Here you can see where we're exposing the base of the skull. We'll then resect any soft tissue off of the skull and utilize a drill to make small burr holes. We use a specialized drill to connect those burr holes 
to remove the skull and expose the dura or the covering of the brain. We can then incise the dura, which will then expose the brain, and we can locate the region where the tumor is and carefully resect it. Here you can see where the cerebellum is on the left side, and then we will enter the brain. I'm gonna be honest, this makes this part look really easy. Pluck that tumor out, close the dura, close the skull, and then close the skin. I really wish that brain tumor surgery was that easy. Of course, that video extremely oversimplifies the removal of the tumor itself, which is the most delicate portion of the operation. During this part of the operation, we have to delineate what is normal brain versus tumor, and that can be extremely challenging. After all, it is brain surgery. Once we safely identify and resect all components of the tumor, we can then be finished with the operation. In our patient's case, he underwent a complete surgical resection and did very well after surgery. He did have an external ventricular drain that was placed during the operation and which we successfully removed a few days afterwards. He's several years out from surgery and has had no signs of recurrence. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and we'll talk more about brain tumors.